Well, Murat Aslan is a security analyst. He joins us now live from Ankara. Thanks for speaking to us. Oh, tell us more about who these three men are and how serious really are the charges against them? Hello, Andrea. These three individuals are, uh, you know, act uh, actually politicians well known in the Turkey, uh, in both Turkish and Kurdish community, and they are heavily affiliated with the, you know, terror uh, allegations before, and they were being tried before judge. Uh, and it's not a new phenomenon that they are linked to terror acts or terror uh, activities. But what we have known is not only the allegations, but also the history. Uh, imagine that Turkey has experienced uh, many incidents at the seats, southeast of Turkey in 2013 and 14, and we experienced a fierce uh, conflict in some suburbs at the southeast of Turkey in 2015. And uh, it was clear at that time that municipalities in these regions had heavily been involved in financing commanding and facilitating terror acts. For instance, PKK had laid out mines and IEDs to be roads by the, you know, help of the municipality assets. So again, uh, what I believe is that uh, Turkish government identified some clues that they are linked to PKK and they just uh, have taken a measure to prevent further escalation of terror acts in Turkey. But the HDP has argued before that it has no real links to the PKK, and they will argue this time that this is a politically motivated attempt to weaken them. Uh, how strong a case will they have there? Well, HDP is clearly a political wing of PKK, because we have seen that they had named the streets in the urban areas with the names of terrorists. And they had celebrated the, you know, distinguished days of the terror organization. And also they had delivered messages, you know, uh, just uh, promoting the ideas of PKK. So HDP is clearly affiliated with PKK and that there should be no discussion for that. And these three individuals are active members of HDP, and we know that they are in uh, continuous, you know, communication with Kandil Mountain at the north of Iraq, which is the HQ of uh, PKK. Okay, give us the broader picture, if you can. I mean, how close, we know this is a decades-long battle, but how close or how far uh, is Turkey toward defeating the PKK as an organization in the country? Well, in Turkey, actually, PKK has been marginalized. It's clear, because we know that they don't have the capacity to have freedom of maneuver in Turkish cities. Second thing, they are not freely employing, you know, terror acts, but, you know, uh, they rarely uh, initiate attacks to both civilians and, you know, Turkish security forces. Uh, but other than Turkish territory, we know that they have roots at the north of Syria and also in Iraq. So Turkish strategy right now is first suppress PKK in Turkey and later then just to destroy the cells in Iraq and Syria. I believe that PKK can only be defeated by means of military strategy because we already know that Turkish uh, public, including Kurds in Turkey, does not credit PKK's objectives in Turkey. So the continuous suppression in Iraq and Syria will defeat that. Democracy is, you know, uh, a kind of uh, argument that Turkey should be uh, in clear engagement, but it's clear that in Turkish democratic system, anybody but anybody can easily be elected and elects. Uh, and if PKK uh, exploits the democratic system, Turkey must take measures to prevent it. Okay. So, okay. Murat Aslan, we're going to have to leave it there. I'd like to thank you so much 
uh, for taking the time to speak to us.